we are going to launch out into the deep, folks, and I want you to I want you to follow along with me because the stuff I've been getting into lately is very important, very, very, very important, and uh, this morning will be no exception. Father, I pray, Lord, for the gift of teaching. I pray, Heavenly Father, for the unction, anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'd open our hearts to receive the truth. Lord, let us know when we see the truth, and then, Father, when we see it, to embrace it. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now turn to Revelation chapter 13 with me. Revelation chapter number 13 and verse number 11. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the false prophet this morning. We have two distinct individuals that show up in 13th chapter of Revelation. One is the false prophet, the other is the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is Satan personified. And uh, in the first part of the chapter there, up until the verse 11, we're talking about the Antichrist. Verse 2, it describes him as a beast that comes up out of the sea. But in verse number 11, the scripture says, And I beheld another beast, another one, coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And then he had power to give life to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast that should they that, and curse that and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You'll notice the word worship shows up in here. Now turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and we believe... Uh, we have reason to believe that the books of First and Second Thessalonians were the first books written in the New Testament, written by the Apostle Paul. Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 1. <coughs> we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. This is the mystery of the catching away of the saints of God, the body of Christ, that will be here when the Lord Jesus comes back that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, at that the day of Christ, and this is very important, the day of Christ is not the day of the Lord. They are two entirely different things. But the day of Christ is at hand. Now watch carefully. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. You've witnessed that. You're, you're a witness to it right now. It's an apostasy. It's a falling away from the truth. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's the Antichrist. He's the man of sin, the son of perdition. Notice he's, he's spoken of in two different senses here. He's called the man of sin, then he's called the son of perdition. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know, now watch carefully, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And this is what is so important about what I'm talking about this morning, is the two references he made that he says in verse, verse number 5, uh, he said, verse 6 rather, And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. And he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. The word used let here is the old English use of the word, which means to restrain. And so therefore, the power of hell is being restrained until it is uh, unleashed upon the earth. And now exactly when that takes place, that's up to the Almighty because He's the one who makes that call, not man nor Satan, because He's holding Satan back right now and has been for a long time. 
As you remember, I talked I talked to you about CERN. We're going to get back into CERN later, but I just want to make a reference to it this morning. The uh, Hadron Collider, Large Hadron Collider in CERN, Switzerland. It is a particle accelerator, and I'm sure they have other terms for it. The idea is that they're trying to uh, collide particles together to recreate the moment of uh, the moment of. Uh, I don't like. I don't guess they like to use the word creation, because if you use the word creation, that implies a creator. I believe in the creation because I believe in the creator. But they're trying to collide these particles together. In doing so, they release uh, particles that, that do not exist in the present form, but they will release these particles when this happens, the, the, the Hadron Collider. And by doing this, they'll be able to examine, look at, uh, experiment with, uh, whatever, uh, these particles that come into existence at the very moment of this collision. And by doing this, they, they believe they're able to go back to the moment of, uh, of the beginning of matter, as we understand it, and learn how all this came to be, or how it came to pass, how it came into being. Now, you and I both know the Bible says in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created. The, Greek, the Hebrew word for create is bara. It means to bring into existence from nothing. He spoke it into existence. But in any event, in the process of bringing these, colliding these particles together, they've had some strange things happen that they did not expect. And some of these are paranormal. And uh, they, are, uh, they, they belong to the, uh, to the realm of the spirit world. And these things don't fit any of the, uh, they have what's called the standard model. And the standard model, of course, is the way that, uh, that physicists define declare, examine the known universe by the standard model. But what's happening there, what has happened there at, uh, at CERN, Switzerland, does not fit the standard model. Something's going on that's beyond their control. As I said to you before, and this is quickly passed through this because I've got a lot of material to cover. But what's it, what is happening is that they, are, that they are moving into the realm of the supernatural because they're getting into the realm of antimatter, and it's also called dark matter. And so this collision produces this antimatter, which is also referred to as dark matter. And this antimatter or dark matter has an effect on human beings and animals. It has a, it has a profound effect. And they still are not able to understand exactly what's going on with it or the, or the potential of it or the ramifications of it. And this is why uh, Stephen Hawking warned them that they may be opening up the very gates of hell, to paraphrase, to put it in my terminology. In other words, the destruction of the universe as we know it. And so uh, he's warning them that they are messing with something that is beyond their control. Well, <clears throat> that's the scientific perspective on it. But let's take the biblical perspective on it. And that is that what's going on at CERN, Switzerland may very well be, may very well portend the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Because what it will be doing is bringing the so-called scientific community across this line, this separation of religion and science, this line of religion and science. Your kids are taught that science is the God, is the altar that we worship at, and religion we pay homage. We, we give it lip service. That's, that's the altar they worship at today. Science is the ultimate God. And the Apostle Paul says, watch out for science falsely so called. And as you know, they have Shiva dancing inside a circle given by the Indian government. And Shiva is the God of destruction of the Hindu trinity. Brahma is the God of creation. And Vishnu is the God of preservation. And, and Shiva is dancing inside this circle. Now here we are, the highest technology on earth some of the smartest minds on the face of this earth, and they have the god Shiva dancing inside the cosmos and destroying, and from the destruction comes a new creation. It falls into the hands of Brahma. And so the point is that, that, the, point is that the Hadron Collider is destroying, it's, it's bringing uh, this huge, that this, it's bringing together these particles, and you have this destruction that's taking place, but from the destruction you are creating because you are allowing men to look into something that they couldn't see any other way. So that's the idea. That's the, that's the overview of what's going on. It gets a lot deeper than that. But let's talk this morning about Mount Graham. 
which is in the state of Arizona. Mount Graham is, uh, is, uh, is, is controlled essentially by the Arizona State University and the government and, uh, and a few other uh, entities, I suppose. Mount Graham is an observatory and it is a, it is a remarkable observatory because of, the, uh, because of the circumstances surrounding of how it came into being. The Apaches are still with us. You may not know that, but they still are. And uh, along with a lot of other tribes scattered throughout the country on reservations and what have you. And Mount Graham is one of the, was one of the four holy mountains, four holy uh, sacred mountains to the Apache. And you say, well, why? Well, that's a good question. Why? Why is it sacred? It is sacred to them because to the Apache, it is a stargate. It is a, it is a, it is, it's like you remember back in the Old Testament when Jacob uh, at his ladder, what did he say when he saw that ladder? What was, what was going on there at Jacob's ladder? Uh, ascending and descending from where? Into heaven. Uh, you might refer to that as a stargate. A stargate is a place where you can move from this dimension into another dimension. You can move from this place into another place. And uh, uh, for example, in the book of Revelation, the apostle John said, I saw a door open in heaven, right? And the door that was open in heaven, of course, carried him up into the future. He was in the spirit on the Lord's day, it says in the beginning of Revelation. And when he, when he reports what's in Revelation, he's reporting what he saw. I saw these things. And he therefore was a, a, first, a first-hand witness. So uh, there's many other cases of this, and this is, I'm jumping a little bit, this will be on down the road. But stargates have to do, therefore, with the, with the movement from this dimension into another dimension. And uh, the Apache Indian now, since they have, uh, since they built this observatory on top of Mount Graham, at the bottom of this mountain, they have their cameras, and they have been videoing all of these phenomena that's taking place up here, UFOs and all this stuff that's happening around this Stargate. Now, folks, I want to tell you something right now, give you a caveat, a disclaimer, before we move further into this. And that is that I'm going to present to this material to you this morning in a hypothetical situation. I may not necessarily agree with everything I'm saying, but I'm giving this information out to you for the sake of information. And then we'll take it and compare it. Uh, I believe in debate. I firmly believe in debate. I believe that a school system, a university, or any school system like that that has only one view on anything, uh, they're blind. I believe in debate. I believe that you should be able to defend your position. I, I'm, if you are a born again believer in here this morning, you have nothing to fear from science. You have nothing to fear from anyone. And uh, if, you're, if you're born again, you believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is the absolute authority. I believe it's the inspired word of God. And I don't believe you're ever going to dig up anything or see anything or experience anything that's going to disprove this book. So uh, the idea is that, uh, that uh, you know, we, uh, we're smarter than you. Uh, uh, you're a little peon. Uh, we're going to condescend to your level and patronize you. And we're going to teach you. We're going to tell you what's best for you. We're going to tell you what's good for you. That's exactly the position of the government today and academia. And that's what's happening. So in any event, the Apache Indian is at the bottom of Mount Graham, and he's up here videoing all this stuff, and he's watching what's going on. Now, let me read an article for you about Graham, then we'll move along. If this was from WorldNet uh, WND. What is it? WorldNet, uh, what's the D stand for? I don't remember, but anyway. What, daily? Wor what? Daily. daily. WorldNet Daily. It's one of the most powerful and advanced telescopes in the world. It uses the fierce power of Lucifer. Now, put that in the back of your mind to capture images of planets outside our solar system peer back toward the beginning of time. The Large Binocular Telescope, or LBT, perched atop the Mount Graham International Observatory in southeastern Arizona, contains an immensely powerful tool that allows humans to observe the faintest and most distant objects in the heavens. Now put this in the back of your mind right now. They are looking very, very intensely off into the heavens. And they're looking for something. They're expecting something. The Vatican is connected directly with what's going on on the top of Mount Graham. The Vatican has uh, Jesuit 
astronomers that are connected with what's going on. They're watching very carefully for what's going on on the top of Mount Graham. And let me go jump ahead a little bit because I know I'm going to run out of time before I get into the love material I want to cover with you this morning. Tom Horn, who is a investigator, uh, you might call him, he'd be like an investigative reporter. Tom Horn, on doing a little treatise on Mount Graham, says that Horn said he spoke with a Jesuit at the Vatican Observatory who told him astronomers there are searching for extraterrestrial intelligence and planets inside our solar systems. Now let me drop this with you for just a moment. I read just a few days ago an article about, an, about a NASA, a scientist with NASA, female NASA scientist, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. We're talking now. She said, quote, there is no question that there are extraterrestrial beings out there and that we will come in contact with them. No doubt. They're there and we're going to come into contact with them. The Vatican has pushed itself to the forefront in the observing, the observation of what's up there that's coming down here. In other words, the Vatican is saying something's up there and it's coming down here, and we're going to be here to receive it when it gets here. We're going to be the first ones to, to acknowledge its presence, and we're, and because, of course, we're the church. The rest of you are just peripheral peons. The church is headquartered in Rome, Italy. We're the church, you see, and the rest of you, uh, if you ever do make it to heaven, you'll make it to heaven through our church. Therefore, if there are extraterrestrials, they'll understand fully and completely right off the bat, we are the top dog, the chief dog of the boneyard. That's the idea of the Vatican. Now, do you believe that? No, I don't believe it, but they believe it. That's what's important about this. They're looking for these things to appear, and they say they're on their way, and it's just a matter of time before they make the announcement that they're here. Now, I want you to start thinking with me this morning. How could they be so certain that something is coming from up there to down here and that they're going to be the ones that, they, that the extraterrestrials acknowledge to be the, to be the supreme uh, representation of religion on this earth and there's going to be a connection? This is important. This will connect religion and science. If you'll remember... Under Charles Darrow in the 1800s, religion went one way and science went the other. And a lot of people bowed down at the altar of Darwinism over the Word of God. And then, of course, a whole new thing was created from it. It's called theistic evolution. And that is that you believe in God, but you believe He used evolution as the, as the way to bring about uh, uh, the uh, life as we know it. So... We have this, we have this, we have these extraterrestrials, these ETs, that are on their way to this earth. And the Vatican has built one of the most, one of the most high-tech observatories in the world on top of Mount Graham to observe their coming. And located right over next to them is this seven-story edifice that's called Lucifer. Now, you and I both know Lucifer, as I've told you before, is a Latin word. Shows up in Isaiah 7, uh, Isaiah chapter, what is it, 14, and uh, 14 something. Lucifer shows up one time in the whole Bible. It's a Latin word, not a Hebrew word, but it is connected with the devil. Anybody that's a Bible believer has no problem connecting Lucifer and the devil. You ask anybody, uh, who is Lucifer? Oh, that's another word for the devil, but not with these people. But anyway, that's another thing altogether. So, uh, they are coming down. Now, here's a statement by these astronomers. And here, according to Horn, in fact, they told us that nobody in academia now any longer believes that humans are the only intelligent life on a planet in this galaxy. Nobody, none, zero. They said that all academia now accepts the fact that it's really just a matter of time having to do with us locating life on other planets and not just organisms, but intelligent life. 
and maybe intelligent life literally trillions of years ahead of us in terms of their evolution. Horn added, it feels like they even know something or they suspect something or they're simply putting themselves in a position in case extraterrestrial life is discovered to be the go-to religious source. Beyond Lucifer, that was really the deeper reason that we went to Mount Graham. And of course they are. Now, I want you to listen to me this morning, what I'm talking about, because it's important. How many of you understand the green revolution that's going on right now? Agenda 21. Now, this is we're going to spend a lot of time with Agenda 21, but Agenda 21 is not of the United States, but it exercises authority over the United States. And Agenda 21 is connected with the Green Revolution, and it moves into the very sovereignty of the states and the sovereignty of personal ownership. Agenda 21 is an all-encompassing thing that is moving right into this country and all over the world. It's connected with the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution is connected with Gaia. What's Gaia? Gaia is the earth. And the earth is supposed to have a spirit about itself. It has a life. It is a living entity. And therefore, we humans are destroying the earth. Therefore, we are immoral. And because we are destroying this earth, we are immoral. We need somebody to come along and straighten us up. And that's what Agenda 21 is about. You see, this is the hypothesis, the hypothesis of it. I don't believe that, but this is what they're teaching. And Barack Obama is pushing what? What's he been pushing a lot here lately? What? Green energy and, and the global warming agenda and the, uh, and the uh, sustainability, the whole nine yards. This is why the Keystone Pipeline out there from Canada on down in the United States, he was so, uh, he, he was so against it is because it's supposed to, it's possibly could pollute the earth, you know, bust the pipe, bust, so forth and so on, all this. But the bottom line is that uh, the President of the United States right now is, 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 is fully in the green movement. Remember this now. The green movement is part of a one world government attempt to bring you under the, all, the whole, the, uh, the, the umbrella of this coming extraterrestrials from above that planted man on this earth. And, he, and these things up here put man on this earth. It's called transpermia. They put man on this earth, and when they put man on this earth, they've been observing us on this earth, watching us evolve, and now they're going to come back because they're mad because of what we've done to the earth. And so they're going to come back, and they've got a message for us, and they're going to do something about the earth. They're coming as saviors. You say, well, now, preacher, where are they coming from? They're nothing up there, folks. It's all demonic. But what I'm trying to do is to give you how these people think, how they're thinking. And this is where we're leading to. Pope Francis is the present Pope. He's the present Pope. And he is uh, in the process now of coming to America. He's going to, uh, he's going to give out an encyclical. This encyclical has to do with, uh, with the green agenda, Agenda 21, uh, with Gaia, the earth. Uh, the, this Pope, as you might, as you should, as you know, is a Jesuit priest. And he is the first and only Jesuit priest, the only one that has ever been the Pope. And uh, he is, uh, as you could, if you followed him at all, you can see where he has said some things that has angered a lot of Catholics. And I'll say this right now for you this morning. There's a lot, an awful lot of conservative Catholics out there that have no use for Pope Francis. Okay? They got no use for him. As a matter of fact, you can read their blogs, go to their websites, and you'll be amazed at the criticism coming from these Catholics about their Pope. Now, of course, you know, that's not good. They don't, they're not supposed to do that. Uh, when he speaks ex cathedra, he speaks from the, cathed from the seat, the cathedra from the seat uh, with the authority of God, but they don't accept him. They've rejected Pope Francis. He is a Jesuit priest. He is a Marxist. He's a Leninist. He's a socialist. He is definitely coming against what America stands for. He's not about what we're about. But he is definitely in the forefront of this movement to do what we're talking about. How many's ever heard of astrotheology? Astrotheology. The Catholic Church is in the forefront of the alien connection savior. 
the idea that the aliens are going to come down and they're going to save us. Now, keep this in mind. You say, well, now, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, it doesn't matter whether we believe it or not. You're going to be informed. You're going to be able, when you get done with this morning, you should be able to put a lot of stuff together and makes more sense to you. In the book of Daniel, chapter number 11, verse number 38, it talks about this, this, this person who shows up. Daniel eleven thirty-eight. 38. Daniel eleven thirty-eight. 38. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. The he, of course, is referring back to the Antichrist. And it says he will honor the God of forces. This is a strange alien God. That's exactly what it's talking about here in Daniel chapter number 11. An alien God, a strange God that he intends to honor. Malachi Martin, how many ever heard of him? He's a Jesuit priest, Malachi Martin. Now let me give you this warning. I'm telling you this stuff as it is presented. And it doesn't mean that I necessarily agree with everything that's said, but I want, to get you, I want you to get a broad perspective of this so we can put a lot of this stuff together later. Malachi Martin said that Satan is enthroned in the Vatican. That's what he said. Malachi Martin said that the Jesuits are trying their dead level best to take control of the Vatican and when they take control of the Vatican, they intend to make it the leader in the one world government, to bring about a one world government and a one world religion, and the Jesuits are in the forefront. Now, if you know Ignatius Loyola started the Jesuits and they take an oath, and in that oath, they swear in that oath that if they have to lie, if they have to deceive, whatever they have to do to get the job done, they'll do it, just like a Muslim. And in the Quran is taught that he can lie to you if he needs to, right. to defend his position, get whatever he wants to get done for strategic purposes, that he can do it. So just keep that in mind, that these Jesuits are taking over the Vatican, that there has been a big, there has been an immense fight going on inside the Vatican, and obviously they took over, because who's your pope? He's a Jesuit. So who won the battle? One man, Malachi Martin, who tried to reveal this stuff to the world and talk about this and tried to make people understand what's going on in the Vatican, wound up dying under suspicious circumstances. He told a priest right before he died, he said, somebody jerked the rug out from under my feet. I fell down the stairs, went into a coma, they put me in the hospital. I came back out of that coma for just a little while, and I'm telling you that somebody murdered me. And Malachi Martin was about to write a book that was going to reveal all this stuff about what's going on inside the Vatican. Another priest in the Catholic Church was, uh, was saying this. I think he appeared on Italian, uh, Italian television and was telling the world about what's going on inside the Vatican, and they found him with his throat cut. These people apparently had come out with too much too soon and the Vatican had made a decision or whoever's running this thing that this was too soon to get this information out and the time, when the time is right, that it will come out. So, the, uh, uh, when you find people that are dying of suspicious circumstances that have something to say about somebody, a police detective would say to you, hold on, <laughs> there's something going on here, right? Exactly. And this is what happened. Uh, another man, another priest died uh, because he had, uh, he was, he was uh, along with Malachi Martin, this other priest, he was trying to warn the people. He's trying to tell the world. He was trying to say, look, there's something going on inside the Vatican that is sinister, that is very sinister, and that these people intend to, uh, to take over the Vatican. And when they do take it over, they're going to lead the world's religions and the world into a one world government. Do you remember reading the book of Revelation where it talks about the beast turning against the whore and devouring her? Do you remember that? It talks about that. I think it's chapter 17. When the beast is the Antichrist, turns against the whore, which is the religious harlot that gathers the souls of all mankind together and points them to the Antichrist, 
he turns against her and destroys her. Well, there is an alliance, folks, that's taking place right now, religious and political. The political alliance has to do with NASA. It has to do with these space aliens. It has to do with people like this woman scientist. She's a scientist, folks. She says there is no doubt that extraterrestrials are up there and they're coming down here and we're going to see them soon and it's going to happen. Wouldn't you imagine what the world would think if all of a sudden Pope Francis appeared on TV with one standing next to him or something of that nature and said, they're here, here they are, let me tell you who they are, let me tell you what's happening, let me tell you what's going on. The world would be shocked to death to see something like that. Shocked to death. Especially a church that is 35 miles long and a quarter of an inch deep. Right? Next time I say it, it's going to be an eighth inch deep. <laughs> it's, getting it's getting more shallow by the day. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? What do you think it would be? In 2009, the Vatican, here's what they did. In 2009, the Vatican called for an astrobiology study. All right. In other words, a star biology study. They called Vatican scientists, uh, astronomers from around the world, Professors of theology, theoretical physicist. Stephen Hawking is a theoretical physicist, like at CERN, Switzerland. They started discussing, and here was the discussion from this Vatican meeting in 2009. What would the effect on faith and religion be given the discovery of advanced extraterrestrial intelligence in the universe? What would the effect be? What if you awakened one day to the President of the United States and the Presidents of the other countries standing with a Pope and make an announcement, we are in contact with extraterrestrials or they are here, whatever the scenario may be. What would the effect be on the world? What would it be? It would be profound. It would be astounding. There's no way that we could tell what that effect would be. Now, he that let it will let till he be taken out of the way. People are seeing things right now that literally scare people to death. I believe, from what I've observed, what little bit of study I've done in this, that the removing of the hand that's holding it back is not just one time, just click, all of a sudden the door opens, but it's gradual. The reason I believe that is because the Lord said in Matthew 24 that men's hearts would fail them for fear seeing those things that are coming on the earth. They begin, in other words, a gradual removing of this hindering spirit, whatever it is. A lot of folks say it's the Holy Ghost. That's, you know, that's a different study altogether. But something is holding it back. There's no doubt about that. Something, God is, but how, how are you doing? It's his business, but... God is holding back the force of hell right now Amen. before he turns it loose. And when he turns it loose, Revelation chapter number 9, what does it talk about 9? Revelation 9. There's two doors open in the book of Revelation. Part Exactly. Uh, Revelation chapter number 4 and 5, I saw heaven open. He's carried up into a door, into heaven, John is. Revelation 9, an angel with a, with a chain comes, key rather, comes down to the bottomless pit and opens it up. And up from the pit and comes Apollyon and Abaddon. And uh, their names mean destruction. Apollos was an old Greek god of destruction. As a matter of fact, this is the thing I picked up this past week. CERN, Switzerland, is built on the site of an ancient Greek temple to Apollos. That's remarkable. And Apollos was the god of destruction. Isn't it amazing how this stuff begins to connect and that the people that live around there, of course, are seeing all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff are being seen. I've got some ideas about, about this thing about seeing. I believe it has more to do with your spiritual state than it does with the actual revelation of what's going on there. 
In other words, two people could be standing in the same place, one sees something and the other one not. See what I mean? Because of your spiritual state, your spiritual condition. But that's another thing entirely. So it's remarkable that CERN, Switzerland is built on the spot of an ancient uh, 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 temple uh, altar to Apollos. When the Lord Jesus Christ stood at Caesarea Philippi, I've been there. There's a, there's a wall, a mountain right there. And I walked up to the alcove. There's an alcove right there that's cut right into the stone. I looked right at that image of Pan, where Pan had been right there in that, in that alcove. You're looking at something thousands of years old. The water comes up out of the mountain there at Benias. That's what it's called, Benias. It's the headwaters of the Jordan River. And the Jordan flows on down all the way into the Dead Sea. The Lord Jesus Christ stood there and said, Upon this rock I will build my church. In Matthew chapter 16 at, at Caesarea Philippi. He said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he was probably looking right into the mouth of that mountain because they say that is one of the gates of hell. There's more than one, but that was one of them right there, the gates of hell. One of the apocryphal books, the book of Enoch, and take this with a, take this with a ton of salt. <laughs> when, I quote, when I quote an apocryphal book, please understand that's not the scripture. But if the apocryphal book agrees with the Bible, good for it. So take it with a ton of salt. But the apocryphal book of Enoch says that the watchers came down and landed on top of Mount Hermon, which is right up there in the north. They, mounted, they landed on top of Mount Hermon and then migrated down into the plain. So that made a connection, therefore, between Hermon, which is where the water comes from that goes into Benias, it comes up out of the earth and flows into the Jordan River, that makes a de definite connection with these people, which again, as I mentioned to you at the beginning of the lesson this morning, is a stargate. It's a staircase. It's an opening. You remember when, uh, Saul, uh, when Paul, uh, Saul, the king of, of Israel, went to the witch of Endor? You remember what happened there? Samuel was brought. Well, what did she see, though, before that? Exactly. Spirits coming up out of the ground. Spirits coming up out. And then Samuel showed up. And it was the real Samuel. She thought she was going to bring up an impersonating spirit, a familiar spirit, the Bible calls, calls them familiar spirits. Time and again, the Old Testament warns against this stuff. But she thought she was going to bring up a familiar spirit. But instead, the Almighty brought Samuel up. And when he did, she screamed. She screeched. I mean, she knew she was out of control. <laughs> she knew somebody had stepped in that was far bigger than her because the real Samuel was standing right before them. And, of course, he told Saul, he said, next day you're going to be where I am. And that next day Saul and Jonathan died in battle and, uh, and, wound, up, uh, and wound up there. But, but the point is that it's another place where they're coming and going. Spirits are coming and going uh, in the earth and out of the earth, out of the earth. Now, that's another study. That's something I plan to get into a little further on that all this is going to lead into. But just put it in the back of your mind this morning, Stargate. And you'll hear these words. You type a, do a Google search on it. Just type in Stargate. And you'll be amazed at the kind of thing you pull, you pull up. There's a, there's a fellow that's doing a, a thing right now, another documentary. He's... he's uh, uh, What's his name? He's calling it the wormhole, through the wormhole. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Thank you. And uh, this is the same, this fits in the same category. In other words, it's an access into a different dimension. So uh, keep that in mind. We're a lot closer than you think. Yes, sir.
time and space. A lot of folks think they just fly out. This flies across the top of their head for some reason. When the Lord was taken to the top of that temple, the, the precipice of that temple, and the Bible says Satan showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Right. What do you mean by that, preacher? I believe, I believe it means by that from 606 B.C., the Gentile kingdoms, from Nebuchadnezzar all the way to the future, the time for the Gentiles in. I believe he showed him from the progression of time. He showed him all of that. He had the power to do that. Folks, that's a lot of power. <laughs> That's not to be taken lightly. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, on top of the top of Mount Hermon, the United Nations put an observatory up there. And for the same reason that the Catholics put Lucifer, uh, that telescope Lucifer on top of Mount Graham in uh, Arizona. And almost, if you go on the opposite side of the world, they're almost like on opposite poles. Yes, in other words, it's like the the uh, the devil's triangle in in the Bermuda Triangle and on the other side of the world directly opposite from it there's another uh, supernatural place like that some kind of a triangle yeah and 33 is a big number in the occult world Yeah, 33. And how high do you get in Masonic Lodge? 33. 33. It's a big number. It is. It's important. Now, I wish, I wish unto the Lord God, bless his holy name, that somebody would have talked to me like this when I was 17 years old. Because I bought this lie, hook, line, and sinker. I bought into evolution and all that garbage. I believed it. And it destroyed my life for years. Yes, sir. Tom Horn. And he's coming out with another one now. It's called The Immortals. Exo Vaticanus, uh, The Immortals, and Petrus Romanus, The Final Pope. And these are the trilogy that he's writing, and this uh, Immortals is the last one. Folks, please, it doesn't mean I agree with everything Tom Horn says at all. Some of his speculation may be wild and off base completely, but of all the people that I've been reading lately, and checked into. This man has done more research and has got more material packed into his books and into his website and his blogs than I've seen from anybody else. And there may be others out there, no doubt are, good people. But if you want to get into this thing head over heels, you start reading what Tom Horn has to say, you'll be amazed how quickly he'll take you into the deep. And he yes. Was a pastor for 30 or 40 years yes. Went into all this yes. So, and one of the things one of the things that lends credibility to Tom Horn is this. He makes no bones about the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope and, the, and, and Pope Francis and where it's headed right now. And he's not condemning all Roman Catholics. He's talking about the hierarchy. I should understand. I'm not condemning all Roman Catholics. Uh, whether, it's not whether you cross yourself. It's not who you have in your heart if you're born again. That's what matters. But, but, the, but, the, but the situation is... Uh, is dire. There's something else I wanted to say too. Now it's done slipped my mind. It was important. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to get back on it next week. Uh, we're going to pick this up again, folks. We just laid the foundation today. This thing's going to. This thing's going to really uh, open up now. You're going to begin to see how close we are. Uh, there's some. There's some heavy duty stuff going on. Heavy, heavy, heavy stuff, and it's happening right now. It's happening at warp speed too. <laughs> Everything speeded up. Yes, sir. All these names that they could come up with Apollos and, and uh, this uh, serves God, they're all destroyer. Son of perdition, perdition means destroyer. Yeah. Son of destroyer. So it's all connected. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And he also called uh, Judas Iscariot the son of perdition. Yes, sir. Right. That's the truth. And that's the truth. All right. Well, we'll have a word of prayer and let you go. We've loaded you up, folks. 
And by the time you get through this study with us, you'll never see things the same again. And you'll always have this going on in your mind. And the light is what makes the difference. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know what makes me so mad? It is that when I went to school, science was God. And this is the way it is. This is Darwin. This is science. This is what you believe. And now science and religion are merging. That blows my mind. Let's pray. Brother, will you dismiss us? Father, 